1977 Bond film, The Spy Who Loved Me, was the third outing for Roger Moore as 007. And of course, it's most famous for that white Lotus Esprit that dived into the water and turned into a submarine. Let's see if we can find out what happened to the cars from the film. Okay, let's state the obvious first. There was more than one PPW-306R. There were in fact two road cars and there were six, maybe seven cars used for the submarine filming section. So to start off with, we're gonna have a look at the road cars. So famous for that car chase up through the Sardinian mountains, PPW-306R was actually only on the road until 1979 if we check DVLA. So didn't stay around that long. So what happened to it? Well, apparently it was retained by Lotus through until 1988. Now that's when they decided to have a little bit of a sell off through Coy's auctioneers of some of their prototypes and you know retained cars. And this is free was one of them. Now at this point, it had only done 19,000 miles and it was sold for £33,000, which in today's terms doesn't sound an awful lot, but it was sold to a chap called Peter Nelson, who had a car museum up in Lancashire known as Cars of the Stars. Now alongside this museum, Peter developed a Bond museum for a selection of the cars. And in 2011, he announced he had actually sold the whole collection and it was moving to Miami. Bit in June of that year, Cinema Retro announced on their website that it had actually been purchased by a chap called Michael Desert. Now, Michael was a very successful business and uh, property magnate, and he bought the cars to add to his rather incredible 600 car collection. And that's why it was on the move to Miami. And I also found these pictures on the Lotus Forum of PPW on the back of a transporter, presumably on its way to the United States. So these cars landed in the USA and Michael put them on display with all these other cars. He also added a, a Lotus Esprit submarine car to his collection and I'll come back to that one later. But unfortunately being north of Miami it wasn't apparently in the best location and incredibly in 2014 he announced all 59 cars of his Bond collection were up for sale for a mere $33 million, which apparently at the time was somewhere around about £20 million. Now it appears that this sale never actually happened because in 2018 he opened Desertland Park, his own sort of adventure park, which was in a repurposed shopping mall. And this was actually now in the hub of sort of tourist Florida in Orlando. So he moved everything there. There's also things like cart tracks, shooting galleries, all sorts of bits and pieces. And apparently the museum is a lot more successful there now. And in fact, we can see this 2021 video from YouTuber Joseph Dickerson. And we can see the car is still there and still on display for people that want to go and have a look. So that's one road going car. What about the other one? Well, apparently the second car was actually used at the start of that chase scene where Q hands over the car to James Bond and obviously it's just come off the ferry. And it was also used, as you can see in the pictures here, as a, a camera chase car. Now, one of the problems allegedly they, they incurred was obviously the, the Lotus Esprit we know was a very good handling car and they were having trouble with um, cars to keep up with it for filming purposes. So the ideal thing was another Esprit. Now this car incredibly was returned to Lotus and put onto the production line and finished off as a standard car. It then got sold on and ended up in Germany where it had a, a good mechanical restoration and was returned to the UK and had a interior restoration done and apparently this cost £14,000 now, if you want to earn some real nerd points here, the difference between a standard Lotus Esprit at that time and one of the Bond cars is spotted in the headrests in the interior. Because apparently 
if they kept this original quite um, striking tartan pattern, it would have reflected into the uh, actors' faces. So what they did was convert the headdress, as you can see here, to green facing. And the person that had the uh, second row going Lotus has done the same thing. They have then put it to auction and it's back in London at this point. So I've only got chassis numbers and engine numbers. So I've got no registration to track this thing down with. It was guided at 100 to 120,000 and ultimately sold for 111,500. So that guide was pretty much spot on. But thereafter, I'm lost. I've got nothing to track it with at all. So I'm taking it. It must be in somebody's private collection somewhere because it's not advertised as being on display anywhere. Of course, unless you guys know different and can help us out. So on to the submarine cars. And this is where it's going to get quite involved. So hang on in there. Now, there were, I understood there were six cars. I've also had reports there were seven cars, but I can identify six. So from the top, there was a car which was used to dive into the water. And if we look at this still here, you can see that the tube sticking out of the back of the car shows that it was fired into the water using an air cannon. Now, the second car was, again, just a body shell, like the first one that was fired into the Mediterranean, but was a spare. Whether they thought they were going to miss the Mediterranean, I don't know, it's quite big. But anyway, they had a spare for that. So that was car number two. Now, car number three was, or I should say body shell really, shouldn't I? Number three was the one where the wheels retracted into the uh, car which enabled car four for the blanking panels to come out to blank off obviously those sections. And then car five was the one where the fins come out. So that accounts for all those. And of those, car number three, the one with the retracting wheels, is the one that's in the Desert Museum in America. And one of the reasons we know that is that body shell has actually been modified. So one side shows the wheels retracting and the other side shows the, the blanked off wheel arches with fins. So car six. Now that's the one we're really interested in because that is the one that was actually the submarine car. And that was nicknamed Wet Nelly. And that was in honor of Little Nelly, which was the auto Jaru from the earlier Bond film, You Only Live Twice. Now this car was not really a true submarine in the respect that it was only really a body shell. As you can see by the pictures here for, of the interior, it was not like you see in the film. The people controlling it had to wear breathing apparatus because it couldn't be made watertight. And that's of course one of the reasons we see the uh, windscreen protection grills so you can't see the sort of scuba divers inside the car. Now this car was actually acquired by the US Lotus distributor and they used it for display around America impressing VIPs and potential Lotus customers with it for a couple of years after the film. And obviously after that period the interest in the film had pretty much died off. So in 1979 it was decided to put Wet Nelly into storage. So on Long Island they found a container, popped it in and paid 10 years up front, locked the door, walked away and forgot about it. Unfortunately in 1989, when the rent became due again, they obviously clearly forgotten about it. Contact details had changed and the owners of the storage couldn't get hold of the people that owned the car. So as the situation was a default, they put the unit up for, for auction. I'm sure you've all seen Storage Wars. Well, this is one where they did actually find something quite exciting. So this guy actually purchases the unit contents for $100. Blind auction, didn't know what was in it. So he turns up with his trailer, opens the door, takes all the blankets off the top, thinks, oh, I've got a car. As he works down, realises it hasn't got any wheels. So he's a bit disappointed, really. Pops it on the trailer on the back of his uh, truck and sets off with it. It came to light really at this point that the chap had never seen the spy who loved me. And as he was driving back, people are calling him on his CB saying, you know, you've got a Bond car on your trailer. And he's going, 
what, really? And basically went down to the equivalent of his local blockbuster, rented the film, and then realised what he'd actually got. The new owner decided to give it a bit of a cosmetic tidy up and took it on a bit of a tour of, of America, displaying it at various shows, etc. And, you know, generally enjoying what he got. This carried on until 2013 when he decided to put it to auction. And this happened in, in London. And yeah, there's a preview here of the car for sale uh, with the BBC. And, you know, nobody really knows what this car is going to go for. In the end, it went for an incredible £616,000 for a body shower with some scuba, scuba gear in it. It's not, not a bad price, that, is it? And it was sold to a secret buyer. In October of the same year, it revealed who the secret buyer was. It was, in fact, Mr. Tesla himself, Elon Musk. And he purchased the vehicle with the intention of trying to make what happened in the film a reality. And it was talked about using Tesla motors, etc., etc. However, 2016, three years later, he says, still working on it, trying to put it together and, you know, get back to you soon. And then in 2017, decides that it's probably best to keep it original. He said, it's not practical to achieve what I want to. So what has he done with this car? Well, apparently it's in the design studio at Tesla as a sort of inspiration to his sort of fleet of designers. And apparently in 2019, he said that the new Cybertruck was actually partly inspired by the Lotus Esprit. Now, Mr. Musk is well known for his use of litigation. So I'm going to choose my words very carefully and say, Yes, I see very much where you're coming from, Elon. I think it's uh, very much inspired by the Lotus Esprit, and I'm sure my subscribers out there will give their opinion in the comments below. Is that good enough, lawyer? Great, okay. So, I really hope you've enjoyed that. It's been a little bit of a tangled web, some of this, but it's interesting to know where these cars are. And if you've enjoyed this video, please consider having a look at some of our other ones. Maybe give that subscribe button a whack. And particularly, have a look at this video, which we think you're really going to enjoy.